I just got back from a Disney cruise and I wanna show you the video that I would have liked to have seen before I got on the cruise. So what this video is gonna demonstrate is the value proposition of buying the souvenir mug if you're a beer drinker. And I'm a beer drinker, so this is right up my alley. So the idea with the beer mug is it's a souvenir mug and it's $18.88, which includes the tip that you pay when you buy it. Now for $18.88, you get the mug and it's a good mug. It's a solid mug. It's a, it's a glass, um, very nice to drink out of. It's a um, souvenir in and of itself. And if you're all about uh, getting souvenirs and you're willing to pay you know, 18.88 for the glass, then it's an absolute no brainer. Go ahead and buy the uh, glass and get the benefit of it while you're on the cruise. Why wouldn't you? Plus it gives that extra thing of, you know, at least a version of this glass you used uh, on your cruise. So you have that connection. However, if you're in it for the value proposition, that's what I wanted to demonstrate with this video. Now, if you've seen another video that I did, and I, <laughs> I went into the idea of when you go into a bar and you order a pint, how you rarely get a pint of beer. It's usually somewhere between 12 and 14 ounces. Um, the European pint uh, concept, they actually took care of this because if you buy a European like a Guinness in Europe, the, the glass that they put it in is actually larger than 16 ounces, and that's to make way for the pouring and the foam and so forth. So you end up with 16 ounces. In the US, we don't have that type of regulations. I've seen uh, pint glasses, so to speak, pint glasses that are 14 ounces. It's very common. But anyhow, even if you get a 16 ounce uh, pint in the US, it's very rare that you would get 16 ounces. You have, to, you pour that uh, liquid right to the very top is if you were just uh, getting ready one more drop, it would spill over. That's a 16 ounce pint. pint. So anyhow, I just throw that out there because this premise is, is based on getting a 16 ounce pint, pint and that might even be a false premise. But they advertise the beer as a 16 ounce pint and you can buy that beer and when you buy alcohol on the ship, the tip is automatically included, but you can buy a, 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 a first tier, like a Bud Light, for $7.67, and that includes the tip. So $7.67, unless you, obviously you can tip more if you want to, but if you just go the basic route, that's the cheapest that you can buy a beer, which would be Bud Light. And I think there's some other ones, but basically I drink Bud Light, so it was easy. And, um, and so I bought uh, Bud Lights and I got the benefit of this class. Now, so what benefit did I get? Well, let's pour a 16 ounces of liquid into this mug to show you where it goes. And again, trust me, I, I'm not trying to trick anything here. So that I put 16 ounces of liquid of water into this 16 ounce, add it up to the line there. And that's where it comes. Now what's significant about that? I did receive a, uh, at least one beer that was filled to about that amount because you gotta remember, especially around the pool area, they're juggling these beers uh, to get to you. So, but for the most part, it was pretty fair, but I did receive maybe, maybe one uh, or two that were that low, but for the most part, they were more than that. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add four ounces of liquid. Well now, why four ounces? Why not six ounces or anything? Well, because I never got a beer that was over four ounces more. And I'll show you what that looks like. Here's the additional four ounces. Okay, so again, I, obviously that's a full beer and I only got a couple of beers that were that much. So the average uh, one that I got was probably two ounces less than that, which of course would change the math. But let's not get into that. Let's just figure that every beer was a legitimate pour like that, which is 16 ounces plus four ounces, which makes it a 20 ounce beer. 
Now the value proposition is this. When you buy a 16 ounce, granted I understand the funny math because it's not 16 ounce, it's probably 14 ounce, but when you buy a 16 ounce pint for $7.67, that works out to 48 cents per ounce approximately. So your basic baseline is 48 cents per ounce. That's if you don't buy the mug, you're just buying your uh, Bud Light um, at on the Disney cruise ship. Well, at 48 cents per ounce, it takes you 39.33 ounces to break even. So let's just call it 40. 40 ounces gets you back that $18.88 investment. And again, you get to keep the mug, so I understand that this would mean just a pure, you don't want the mug, but you're just in it for the, uh, for the uh, value proposition. So, um, so in order to break even, you would have to have 40 ounces of the additional four ounce in those full pours like that. Well, that would take you obviously 10 beers. So, if you're into this, if you're following this at all, if you drink more than 10 beers on the cruise, then uh, it's a, you might as well get the mug because there's no downside to it whatsoever. But if you drink less than 10 beers, then um, you need to factor in the value and, and how the value you give to the mug because that's what you're getting. And um, the other thing to consider, which I didn't really consider is uh, when you get the mug, then you're kind of locked into beer. So if you go and you get a martini or you get a mixed drink or the drink of the day, well, obviously that's uh, off the chart, off the value chart when it comes to drinking this, um, this out of this mug because this mug only applies to beer. And also I said that Bud Light is the cheapest. You can buy more expensive beers. So the numbers change a little bit as you buy more expensive beers. But again, I made this video because this is what I wanted to see before I got on the, on the cruise, which was, which way should I go given my personal habits? Should I put the money in and buy the mug or not? Now, this is where I ended up. And uh, I bought the mug, obviously. And uh, I learned to like the mug. I spent a lot of time with it, not this exact one, because they have a great chip program where you turn in the mug and you get a chip, basically a, a laminated card. And then you don't have to carry around the glass all the time. And that's a great idea. It worked perfectly, flawlessly. And so I went through a number of these, but let's say on a five night cruise, I easily had I mean, I, I don't know, I don't even want to say, but I easily had more than 10 beers. And so for me, uh, the value proposition was there and it made a lot of sense and it was all good. But again, it's up to you and the way you drink beer and, and what your value proposition is. But, it, but at least now you have the information to where you can make that decision with, with, um, with the good information. I should lastly say that this, uh, this cruise was in November of 2022. So these numbers are only good for November of 2022. If you go on a cruise at any other time, I don't know what those numbers would be. All right, take care.